Hello folks, and welcome back to twitch.tv slash gameswithnick. We recently finished Dark Souls Remastered, so I decided to switch it up a little bit. Um, before we move on to Final Fantasy X, I kind of just want to play one of my favorite point of adventures. Period. Which is Cratchits. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a game that I just discovered as a kid, because, you know, when you're a kid and you have a PC, you just play a bunch of weird adventure games, and... I, I, there's just something about this game that I really, really love. So let's just go through and play it. Uh, let me just make sure to turn on the hints. Um, we probably won't see a lot of them because they're pretty good about waiting for it, but new. And I also don't remember when's the last time that I played through uh, the Director's Cut bonus thing. So we're going to play through the, game, the main game for now. Let's see if maybe we want to go from there to also playing the... Director's Cut, DLC, whatever you want to call it. Slow build, weird photos. Saturday morning amidst a thick veil of fog. The weather didn't look good, and there was an unnatural calm surrounding the area, yet I soon became entangled with the place. Driving the old mini. Here we are, Scratch's Manor, Saturday, October 12th. The cloudy sky above me seemed rather unsettling and almost made me lose my balance. I felt a curious urge to run for shelter, but my new home in the distance seemed very inviting. It was the boot of my car, which, considering my non-existent technical expertise, I'd hope I would never need to open. This is a British car! And it's an old car, so... So we found the keys. But so the um, entrance at the rear and the um, trunk is in the front. Was the car started? That's not what I meant to do. I guess we have the key, so let's go up first to Manor and see what's up. There was no way I could open it with my bare hands. Oh, let's see what we have. Uh, how do I do this? Am I missing some controls? Let me quickly change something.
Oh, I need to grab this to look at things. The suitcase was holding some of my stuff and was awfully heavy. My loyal typewriter was inside that case. This was the key Jerry gave me to Blackwood Manor. The key to my trusty car. It was my journal. Currently empty, it seems. Logic dictated that. Okay, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's just giving you a tutorial of some sort. Let's go this way first to explore things a little bit. The door to the greenhouse was stuck, probably due to some serious rusting of the hinges. Massive double doors leading to the interior of the chapel were locked. So we have the chapel in front of us on sort of the side of the house. The greenhouse in the corner. We cannot go that way. So let's go in. Grab the key. With very little effort, the key unlocked the front door. Now, this is going to be an annoying thing that we need to do. Um, essentially, we need to search every single drawer in this house to be able to advance the story. It was a red or torn umbrella. It was a huge vase of rental of craftsmanship standing by the window. Jerry, it's good to hear your voice. I see that piece of junk you got there is working. My thoughts exactly. I was afraid it'd fall apart as soon as I laid my fingers on it. So how did you find everything? Do you like the place? It's hard to tell yet. I'm very impressed, that's for sure. You sound odd. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, yes. It's perfectly fine. It's just that I'm in awe. I mean, pleasantly surprised. This house is like a dream come true. I'm telling you, I'm going to turn this place into a factory of horror stories. Good. You ought to finish that book. I'm rooting for you, mate. You sure everything is in order? Well, I just got here. Let me have a look around, and I'll get back to you if I find anything strange. Excellent. I'll talk to you later. All right. So let's, uh, let's do a tour of this beautiful house we just purchased. I always wanted to be a pianist, but eventually found another use for my fingers. It was all gibberish to me. Paintings with very, uh, public domain art kind of thing. The place is full of exquisite, albeit aged, candelabras. The fireplace had a generous amount of wood in it, and I was relieved to know that I could warm the place up in case it got cold. I'm certainly not good at chopping trees. I intended to brighten up the whole place, but to my surprise, the lights wouldn't work. This looks more like a study. Old candelabras. Remnants of a previous fire. The stone in the fireplace was cold to the touch. Not 
nothing in the first drawer. No cigar in the second drawer, and a screwdriver, it seems. Nothing in the third drawer. Oh, actually, I missed the middle one. We get a letter of some sort, some money in it. That drawer is locked. Okay. February 6th. The construction of the railway bridge is always it's almost complete and went quite smoothly. It took longer than I expected, yet I wish it would have lasted longer. I will be very sad to leave South Africa. I've become so attached to it, its culture, its arts, even the past few months, that I can't help feeling as if it was already a part of me. I will, I will surely return someday. Soon, hopefully. Although I'm afraid there is a great deal of work to be taken care of in old Britain. Fortunately, I made good friends here who were ecstatic about my new appreciation of their country. They've offered me some wonderful objects as a token of gratitude, which I have already created and got ready to ship, along with many, along with many trinkets I bought myself. It looks like I'm about to start a very substantial collection. It's a good thing Catherine agreed to move into our new home, although I fear sever several renovations will have to be made, even more if I'm intending to start a serious new hobby. It seems I have to get back to work. John Patterson has just told me some natives are causing trouble. A very unfortunate thing, although I'm secretly rejoicing. The very 12th. The natives won't leave. It's not like they're causing trouble as much as they're unsettling our workers. The only complaint so far has been distraction. They just stand still between the trees staring at us without blinking an eye. I've watched them for a few minutes and they truly seem like some tender per statues. At first it was just annoying, but lately it has become downright creepy. They seem to be stalking us. So it's not like they're hindering construction, but there is a general uneasy feeling as if they were about to jump at us at any moment. I think I'll hire some protection as a measure of precaution. February 15th. Fascinating! I've been looking into these natives. They live in a nearby village and are a very small group, yet they seem to match quite well. I had thought of them as quite uncivilized tribes. Classic bridge imperialism. But their movements are calculated and one can perceive a sense of careful organization in their tasks. Oddly enough, they seem to be very brutish, and their aspect looks awful, although I couldn't take a good look at their facial features as I followed one of them completely on my own, and it could have been dangerous getting any closer. Also, the village is poor and very rough, but some of the shacks left out as inviting or special. It made me very curious. I will try to come closer tomorrow. February 16th. My second expedition to the village of the natives has been failed by an unexpected problem at the bridge. I'm afraid it was due to a slight miscalculation on my part. An indication that I should be focusing more on the task at hand and put my sudden love for all African things aside for a moment. It was my fault and I accept it. February 20th. There it is again, lurking beyond the forest. It's amazing how they've changed our perception of the surroundings. At first we were delighted by the quiet nature of the place. Now, we fear what horrors might be concealed in the dark and foreboding cloak of trees. Tops loom above us, overshadowing the bridge, and strange noises haunt our meals. Even the river. Telling... Even the river telling a deadly secret? I guess. We could be, of course, a bit more sensitive towards distraction, but I can't help feeling the area has, in fact, become more sinister. And yet, I'm still looking forward to satisfying my curiosity about the tribe. February 24th. At last I found something wor more about the neighboring tribe. This is an incredible finding and I just can't withhold my excitement. Some elders in the local town happened to know about them, but only through stories they heard. The most surprising thing is that the tribe was assumed to be extinct long ago, but according to my vague descriptions, the elders think that we could be de dealing with a legend here. Everything they ever learned of them was during their childhood when the tribe was stopped in the town much in the same way they have been stalking us. People used to call them Dihaum, I think. I said for the sound of screams are heard echoing late in the night. They'd come into our streets to see an evil glitter atop a hill in the distance. Some would say it was a fire, others the cursed spirit of an ancient god. Whatever it was, they say the bright lights amid those fantastic screams was bone chilling. The macabre scene would suddenly stop just as it had begun out of nowhere, never to be seen again in days to come. Intervals between those horrible nights became longer and longer until they soon faded into oblivion. The tribe apparently had retreated back into obscurity. 
until now. They were later known as Dalmar, a rather more scientific name, although none of the people I spoke with could probably re possibly remember its origin. I find it extremely surprising that nobody has ever heard about this tribe with the exception of a few townspeople. It must be incredibly rare, and judging by the stories passed on from generations in the town, very old. February 27th. I will confess that I've become nearly obsessed with the strange tribe. I see them as the most prized goal of my appreciation towards all South African things. A dangerous yet irresistible reward. I feel as if they were my discovery. I simply have to study them before leaving. I fear I won't have the chance to ever again. It has become an important goal of mine. Even more important than finishing the bridge. March 4th. Finally, I have managed to see them. My god, what a disturbing spectacle. When we arrived, they were moving around the village very slowly, without speaking or communicating with each other, each minding his or, or her own business, completely alien to the rest of the world. They were filthy looking, coarse and downright disgusting. I couldn't see any weapons, but they could have uh, been stored somewhere. It was all very strange behavior in a tribe. They must be quite unique. Then, as if they had suddenly all become possessed by some wild spirit, they began shaking spasmodically and screaming like mad. Some of them dropped to their knees and lifted their heads to the sky, eyes blank, and moaning in an indes indescribable way. Two of them walked away, still in the mon monotonous and slow manner, and in grand contrast to the rest of the scene, into a shack. The next minute, they brought out into the open an odd-looking mask. Its shapes, colors, and overall looks, while unsettling, were mesmerizing, and I felt instantly hypnotized by it. It rendered my modest collection of African curiosities into dull and uninteresting items. The mask was very ominous, and the whole tribe seemed to greatly revere it. Soon, they began to gather around it and move in circles, fluttering and chanting a guttural psalm. Judging by their motions and aspect of the whole ritual, it must have been some kind of war ritual. I'm not sure how to explain what happens next, as I feel my pulse is already throbbing. Words fail me to recount the most disturbing thing I've ever witnessed. One of the male villagers walked into the middle, near the mask, by his own will. It was an almost automatic act. All of a sudden, the remaining members became silent. I can't tell for how long it lasted, but I was afraid to breathe. I think Dalby and the others were also scared. They wouldn't even blink. I remember being sacked and expectant, soaked wet and expectant. The silence was unnatural. Then, a few members separated from the people circling the mask and jumped on the single villager, beating him to death. To be completely faithful to the event, the small crowd tore him apart. He grabbed his legs in twos and threes and twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth, and the torso soon disappeared under a frenzy tangled of hands. In a matter of a few minutes, the villager was turned into a red sack of bones. Not one of the attackers had the compassion to snap his neck during the sickening process. All was very methodical, as it was just another mundane task. The most terrifying aspect, though, was that the victim didn't even cringe. The silence was so deep I could hear his flesh ripping. I would expect any living creature to scream its guts out in such a condition. I can't tell whether he was drugged or half asleep but I did recognize him dancing like everybody else before walking into the middle of the circle. It was the most outrageous and sadistic sacrifice I've ever heard of. I don't think I'll ever forget what I saw. My intentions of approaching further, even if they didn't have any weapons at hand, vanished. Those creatures, I dare not call them human beings, could have killed my whole company in the blink of an eye with their rage. They seemed to be completely out of themselves and willing to destroy anything intruding into their path. Oh. While the images of the sacrifice still haunt my thoughts, I still can seem to forget that mask. It was so deceptively simple and yet perfect, perfect in its design. I haven't seen anything like it. I surely would love to take a better look. I feel the Dalmar, dangerous as they are, could be the most important ethical finding in decades. What I've seen today is crying for some investigating. I, I just can't leave them like that. I would never forgive myself. And the mask. That mask. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Alright. Um. 
a journey to the surface of the Nile with numerous illustrations. Two years in East Africa. Um, okay, so we opened all of these drawers. I did grab a boring tool. I also grabbed an empty envelope. What else is there? Oh, I'm now noticing. The little drawer wouldn't open. No, smoking can kill you, especially when the cigars are decades old. Most of the clocks in the house weren't working. The diploma granted the title of construction engineer to James T. Blackwood. Several trophies for remarkable accomplishment adorned the room. The huge collection of books was impressive. I would have gladly spent days going through them. Okay. But it doesn't look like there's anything else in this room in particular. Just in case I tried again, but there still was no power. So this is more of a dining room sort of thing. I couldn't decide what was more impressive. The incredible collection of books in the study or the amount of booze in the dining room. The dozen open. A couple of beautiful vases made of shiny glass were standing on the table. Tablecloths, napkins, that certainly wasn't my thing. Candelabras. A picture. It was just some useless junk. Uh, I mean, uh, press antiques. Yes, press antiques. This should lead me back to the entrance hall. Okay, that's good. This is literally where the phone is. Several vases of African craftsmanship were sitting against the, the west window. Right? Drawer was stuck beyond hope. We're gonna first explore the uh, first floor and then move up to the second. The door to the oven was firmly stuck in place. Nothing else to do. Also, it's a very old oven. There were plenty of kitchen utensils in the house ready to be used. There were plenty of kitchen utensils, once again. Where does this lead? Back side of the house. Good, nice mausoleum. A thick wire was tied between both handles, securing the door to the crypt. I guess I don't quite know the difference between a mausoleum and a crypt. Okay, to know that's there. Let's get back into the kitchen. The 
key holder, except there weren't any keys hanging from it. Is there there a little table? Countless jars and cans are in the kitchen. The interior of the refrigerator was begging for some serious cleaning, not to mention a powerful disinfectant. We got the knife. This drawer is empty. The water wasn't running. This is a coffee meal. The grinder was open and waiting for anything to be tossed into to test its blades. It was a nice, rustic, old-fashioned grinder. I love the feeling that you, you know, you really get to know this place. This looks like a bedroom of some sort. The bed in the room was miserable looking. Practical photography, class and paper, a manual. It was just some useless junk. Look at her seen in this room, loved photography. <laughs> Some photographs. Some linen and shit. Empty drawer. Modern photographer, we get a pencil. More photographs, the woods. Dump a sheet of paper into pile some curious markings on it, so I grabbed it to have a closer look. There's a piece of paper with some strange markings, and I was sure there was much more to it than that first seemed clear. Lamo! I managed to reveal what appeared to be a letter in Italian. It was the letter in Italian. I had to do something about it. A bunch of books. Oh, what is this even? Housekeeping old something. So I guess this was probably the housekeeper's room. More photographs. Crypt. Probably the family living here. The house. Evidently, this bathroom has been used as some kind of dark room. The smell coming from the toilet prevented any further investigation. Apparently, the water wasn't running. The sink was covered with a thick coating of dust. It looked as if the cleaning ladies had skipped this room. Alright, so this was the maid's room. The door to what I assume was the basement was locked. Ooh. Sometimes when a mouse jumps out of the window, it's kind of stuck in a little loopy thing, so I appreciate your patience with it. Alright, let's go upstairs. Just a window. Let's just go up. I remember that Jerry said a nice room had been prepared for me upstairs. Let's check this one. I guess the master bathroom. The 
Nothing interesting. Nothing there. Nothing there. Got a rag. Nothing else. Water still not running. There are a couple of towels in the bathroom, but a great deal of repair work would be necessary before I would attempt to take a shower. Ew, gross. What are you gonna do then? Dude. Dude. Like what? Alright, well, this was the master bathroom, I think. It's not a good sign. Some more vases. Um, why don't we actually go up up first? Uh, which means I need to maybe move in the middle and then go up up. Okay, looks like the door's still working over here. Got an Allen wrench. Pile of old bricks. Different bathrooms have been beautiful in different, different conditions, but in its current state, it was sad and depressing. Oh, can I actually... Yeah. The neat little stove was sitting on the plank. I had to light the stove first. I mean, what am I going to use it for? No. With a clean rag. The amount of trash in this room was unbelievable. I swear that I would scream if I saw another brick. I didn't even imagine the pile of rubbish that were inside those boxes. Trash, trash. Trash. Just trash all around. So enter from there, exit from the other side. This ruler here. And again, the reason why I'm being so thorough is that the game essentially won't continue unless you've opened every single freaking drawer in the house. Uninteresting boxes. Bricks. And open this window. A large crack in one of the walls of the tower. A couple of old and rusty lamps adorned the top of the tower. Nothing else to do about it, really. Okay. Back down. Able to enter. Oh, this door unlocked, but I could see a key on the other side through the keyhole. Okay. Oh. We can pull the trick, I think. And this is a piece of newspaper I picked up. We put it under the door. Do we poke it? After a bit of effort, I managed to knock down the key with the help of the board, too. I removed a piece of paper and noticed that the key had gotten stuck behind the door. Whoever said the dumb technique worked? It was impossible to get the key now. There was quite a bit of light coming from below the door. Man, and I felt so smart. The door seemed to be stuck. Well then. That was just straight up an attic. Still no power. Oh, newspapers was huge. I needed a more specific date to look for. 
trunk. Some pictures. Not even that interesting, really. We just find a lamp. Again, just junk. Alright. Straight my eyes detected there was anything useful among the junks, but instead I got the impression of sin a sinister present lurking through shadows. The useless array of random items of every matchable size and color occupied all corners of the attic. There was nothing of interest among those trinkets. Fuck is doing this? Oh, let's do this. Creepy. All right. Um. The old fashioned lamp made me think of exciting adventures I've always dreamt of going on. Looks like nothing in the attic is particularly worth it either. We're gonna go back downstairs. And then start exploring the other rooms on this floor. What about this one? Okay, it looks like a nice somewhat bedroom. There's a mirror that you can move. There's a bigger mirror. Amazing, there was a safe behind the picture. I didn't know the combination of safe cracking certainly isn't my expertise. Examine these areas. That was like just a watch, a stopwatch. Broken frame. Some shirts. I couldn't tell what that was, but it can't have been important if they automatically closed the drawer. A diploma was displayed on the shelf. It appeared that the people who lived in the house were very educated. Books on engineering, math, physics, not my thing. Except for romantic novels and history books, so I decided to stay away from them. I didn't want to go through a bunch of trinkets and perfumes. The bed seems to be comfortable, but too fancy for me. You know, like a nice, uh, baldekin bed? Why not? Be fancy. So if this was the ladies' room, what's in front of it? I was unusually surprised by entering this room. It was some kind of gallery. Its theme being African culture. Most of pillaged from Africa. Something that looked like a lion's claw was firmly attached to the mattress. All those masks, they make me feel very uneasy. They seem to be guarding the room. The lamps seem to be broken beyond repair, probably a souvenir of a hazardous journey. Okay, 
don't really have a lot to go on here. A pair of huge carved tusks are occupying the corner of the gallery. They wouldn't move. Is this play case was holding perhaps the most impressive items in the room? The one in the case seemed to have some kind of panel. It was firmly stuck in place. Maybe with a knife. Hey! The panel had been concealing a couple of wheels. More African items. So by exclusion, this should be our room. I quickly realized that this had to be my room. It became evident why as I glimpsed a gorgeous view through a huge window. I grabbed a stethoscope, which seemed to be about the only useful thing in the back. Doctor lived here, worked here, something. Left his shit here. Stood in the fireplace was cold to the touch. Remnants of a previous fire. It was too early to go to bed. The books in the room were rather boring. No horror novels. <laughs> Unbelievable. The beautiful oak desk was sitting against the window with an extraordinary and inspiring view. I was eager to start doing some work, but the idea of exploring the house was too tempting. I actually kind of just wanted to see what you had. The ending. I have to go up with a suitable ending. The final twist was the most celebrated aspect of BT. It will tear me apart if I don't pull off another thing like that. But how, how, how? Off to the point where Steve goes mad. She is confused. The vision are becoming real. So now we know for sure there's supernatural elements in the story. Wait, is that really so? Question is, does it have anything to do with a creepy old lady or not? Would it be too obvious if her powers were real after all? Big, big question. Would people accept it if the solution to the story is unreal? Damn, why am I trying to please everybody here? No deus ex machina. On the other hand, a realistic solution disguised as supernatural. Is that possible? They're expecting something like that. A real and probable outcome. That's why they love to be key. Bloody hell, this is driving me insane. Somebody's a bit of a victim of the uh, sophomore slump. This little table could come in handy. Can I put my luggage on? Yeah. Michael Arthate, Vanishing Town. The number one bestseller. The most breathtaking page turner of the year. A passing traveler comes across the small town of Fetch Rock set in Cornwall, England, only to find that it's completely deserted, devoid of any signs of life. Houses, shops, town hall, church. No human being to be seen. The traveler informs the authorities of a nearby town of a fantastic event. The next day, an, an officer accompanied by two policemen visits Fetch Rock. Except everything is back to normal. Ten years later, John Parker, a journalist, reluctantly accepts the assignments to investigate these strange events, as they have now grown into a persistent local legend. Could it have been a practical joke by the anonymous traveler? Or did something truly strange take place in the vanishing town? Things become more mysterious when Parker learns no inhabitant of Fetch Rock remembers what happened on that day. What at first seems to be a lousy job for Parker eventually turns into a nightmare as Fetch Rock is an ordinary town, but home to a deadly secrets and a lurking evil. In this outstanding debut, Michael Arthur has concocted a vulnerable twist of tale bound to keep you guessing until the last page. If H.P. Lovecraft was alive and suddenly decided to write a stake on the, Witcher Man, uh, the Wicker Man, the result would be the book. Deep, engaging reading, and downright terrifying. Michael Arthur is a newcomer writer to the genre. 
Born in Providence, Rhode Island, and self, uh, settled later in London, England, his first novel has proved that he takes no prisoners when the goal to scare, is to scare people. With a fresh and compelling writing style, Michael has published several short stories in mystery horror magazines. His upcoming book is eagerly anticipated by his legions of fans. Matches. December 7th, 1976. Michael. It took me months, but at least I think I managed... Well, I mean, think, so to speak, as there are only a few details left, but I can confirm with certainty that it has is yours. I'll get an apology because I didn't think it'd take me that much time. I tell you, I'd have never thought that finding a Victorian house and no more and no less than in Rothbury would have been so hard. The majority of the old houses in this region are either impossible to live in or they belong to the aristocracy. As if that wasn't enough, you and your bloody whips. Was it really that necessary being so cut off from town? Why all the sudden need for solitude? Well, as long as you don't become one of those typical hermit riders. Anyway, this beauty will take your breath away. It belonged to a wealthy family that always took great care of it. Around the, uh, the mid-60s, it became the property of one person, I believe a friend of the family. They lived there for about five years or so and then abandoned it. Yes, you read right. Abandoned it. As far as I know, this lunatic, a renowned, a renowned doctor, spent his last days getting drunk in lousy bars before vanishing from the face of the earth. Why someone would do that is beyond me. The house then became the property of the National Trust, and surprisingly enough, no one ever did anything about it. That is, until I rescued it from oblivion, of course. It took me a lot of work, so I hope you like it. The press is just as we discussed earlier. And it's hard to believe, but the price of the interior was never agreed upon, so whatever you find inside, be it furniture or long-lost Rembrandt, it's yours. Just remember our deal. If you find anything of great value, you have to share it. Now, I won't bother you if your sofa collection happens to be valued in the thousands, but if you bump into a hidden cash of money, and you can never know, really, then I want a piece of it. Wait a sec. If you happen to sell any important item you find inside the house, such as your sofa collection, I have to get a part of it, too. Business is business, my friend. By the way, I sent two people over yesterday to clean from top to bottom. Six years without inhabitants must have left a nice coat of dust, don't you think? I couldn't do wonders, though, and you are going to need weeks to fully clean the place. Oh, you told me the house seems to have a rat problem, but you can't have it all. Should you need anything, don't hesitate to give me a call. Your friend, Jerry. Jerry P. Carter. Web number. Osh Brevling Market, 0207-73764. Got a pen, I got a notebook. Get laundry. Then I move for TH. There's a number of Barbara, which I assume is my assistant. Okay, I can't grab the thing that's right underneath. Ugh, I hope they don't have... Okay, you know what? Let, let me take a quick picture of these. Seven three seven six four. And 7, 2, 5, 4, 1. Um, alrighty. So we've... Done that. What's in here? Drawings of doctors. Empty. Drinks. Nothing on the other side. Why is it that I can't concentrate? Crumpling pages like this. I'm getting worse. I the whisperings, they're killing me. They cannot be real, they cannot be real. Far to the door, but still can hear them in my dreams. How to get rid of it? It was only that simple. But tearing it apart would force me to admit its otherworldly nature. No, it just can't be possible. I cannot have these thoughts across my mind. But I can really hear them so clearly. Have I really lost it? It just can't be that I'm experiencing exactly what James did. It has to be the influence. How else to explain that every time I walk past the gallery, the whispers grow louder. They're luring me inside. It wants me closer. I can hear them again. Yes, the tortured souls of the, fall of the fallen now suffering for eternity. A chant. Next room. I know for sure it's source now. 
I can fool myself any longer. Are there drums? Oh, please, for Christ's sake, don't let it be drums. I have to document this. I have to keep going. Because if James was right, may God have mercy on our souls. Bar the door, eh? Hmm. I wonder why that distressed the writer this much. If it was inspiring, Jared picked the red room for me. It would be ideal when doing some work. Um, nightstand, anything here? Nah, not really. So, since we have a stethoscope, let's try doing the safe cracking thing. Here. And go through. And open this thing. All right, let's prop that up. I couldn't hear anything out of the ordinary. I guess that's not what I'm supposed to do. I thought, oh yeah, we can just like safe crack, but okay. Let's go down. And now that we've toured the whole house, uh, and hopefully opened every drawer, let's go give Jerry a call again. Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hello. Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? Everything seems to be fine, except the lights don't work. Oh, you don't have to worry. I forgot to tell you. I had an electrician, one that I trust, to meet you there this morning. You know how a lack of power can be a recurring issue in old places like that. He should be arriving soon. That's good to know. I'll set up my stuff and let you know how everything does later. All right, let's uh, let's go meet the electrician, I guess. Has somebody just been at the front gates? I went to the front gates just as Jared's instructed, but there was no sign of the electrician. The opposing gates were guarding the entrance to the manor. Mr. Arthay, Mr. Kirk sent me here today to fix the power problem in your residence. I was told to meet you at the gates, but I've been waiting a few minutes and still haven't seen any sign of you. I'll wait some more and then leave. Please contact Mr. Carter as soon as possible. Well, shit, just our luck. What's up, Jerry? We got a problem, Jerry. Carter Properties. Jerry, we have a problem. What happened? <sighs> the electrician missed me. He left a note in the mailbox. Bloody hell. He was supposed to meet you at the gates early this morning. I thought he was just being late. Damn, but I must have missed him for a few minutes. What the heck am I supposed to do now? Why don't you go check the fuses yourself? Good with that kind of thing. Michael, even my grandmother could improvise a fuse. Just go and look and let me know if you see anything burnt. <sighs> As in black spots? Yes, black spots. All right, I'm on it. Let's call our assistant first. I don't know if she'll respond, but.
still need you there. I just hope you're not being bored to death. Oh, don't worry. I'm studying tongues during my spare time. I love that so much. That's great, but don't lower your guard. As soon as I publish my new book, that place is going to get riddled with phone calls and hundreds of fan mail. That's the spirit, boss. I know your new book is going to be a huge success. Of course it will. <clears throat> as soon as I find a proper ending. And stop calling me boss. As you wish, boss. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. All right. A uh, fuse box. Where would people keep a fuse box? I thought I had checked everything, but in the kitchen, maybe? Also, let me make a save, because you never know when these games are going to want to. the basement with this? No, the key didn't fit. Um... <laughs> Outside, somewhere... I don't think it's on this side. I think it's closer to the front. try to pop the light. Jerry again, because I'm not sure where I'm even supposed to be looking or where people would be keeping fuses in a house this big. Yo, what's up, Jerry? It's me again. Hello? Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? I found a safe box in a room upstairs. Would you happen to know the combination? I think I should. Let me see. Hmm. I did take note of the combination once, but I don't have it here right now. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Okay? Great. Thanks. All right. Let's try it again. Damn it. That was Barbara. me, Bobby there. I need to ask you a favor. Bring it on. I found your letter here and I'm curious about it. It's in Italian. Do you think you could translate it for me? My, Mr. Athwaite, are we being naughty? Mrs. Styles. Yes, yes, of course I can. Just send me the letter and I'll put hands to work as soon as I have it here. Excellent. Hmm. I wonder if the postman will come by. I feel like I'm the last person alive in the whole planet here. Yes, Jerry did. I just hope they don't forget about me, that's all. In any case, thank you. You're such a dear. That's what I'm here for. Actually, that's what I'm paying you for. Anyway, I'll go and try mailing that letter. I'll be standing by for action. Thanks. Goodbye. Good luck. 
All right, so that's that's one more thing to do. Uh, I guess switch the pad and I can put the address. Uh, yellow pen letter and was properly addressed. I uh, hope that that they don't need stamps. Well, let's go put that in the mail. So we know that the fuse box is not in the attic, otherwise we've seen it, so I suspect it has to be in the basement. Alright. That has been done. basement key it makes sense that it would be on the key holder but it's not now one thing that you notice as you explore things is that um, when you look through the photos and you find the right one Probably in the dark room. Here, the basement door is open. I feel like I'm missing something in this area. Because I remember the trick behind it. Practical photography. I don't think there's anything else in it, right? No, because that's the only thing we get. That is miserable looking. Oh, hey. It was an old picture of the kitchen and I just had left. As for that vase, it definitely rang a bell. That's what I had not realized, that there was this uh, little thing we could actually touch. Okay. So with that, we should be able to find a vase, which I think is in the corridor, if I'm not mistaken. Right here. Hey, basement key. <laughs> the golden key fit nicely into place and unlock the door. It was terribly cold and damp in the basement. There appeared to be nothing wrong with the fuses. Well, that's a bummer. Also, this sound is really creepy. There was a huge furnace covering most of the east wall. I didn't understand why, but I began to feel really terribly uneasy. It had a menacing look to it. Maybe it's also, you know, the sound. The interior of the furnace was as dark as much as the mouth of a wolf. In any case, I didn't want to spend too much time near it. There was a drain over the concrete. The valve was stuck and wooden budge. Can we force it open somehow? No. No. I guess we don't have anything to force that open yet. Alright, well, let's get out of this creepy ass basement.
Now comes the moment of truth. Have we looked everywhere in the house? Hey Jerry, it's me again for the fifth time today. sense of adventuring back in London, Phyllis. I have work to do. Then do it. What else could you ask for? Now you have the chance to experience firsthand one of your period pieces. Oh, very funny. Try getting that guy over here as soon as possible. Don't worry, I will. Make sure you find some candles before it gets too dark. Yes, candles. Bye. Immediately after hanging out with Jerry, I realized that I had already explored enough to determine there wouldn't be any candles inside the house. Yes! Hello, Jerry. Uh, I'm sorry, I know I just hung up, but, uh, yeah, no candles. Yes? Jerry, I'm freaking out. I couldn't find a single candle inside this place. You're kidding me. I can't believe it. Did you look well? Yes, every single room, drawer, box, cabinet, nothing. No candles. Your whole closet. This is getting on my nerves. Come on, it's just a quick ride. You know how to get there? Yeah, I saw it on my way here. Did you call Mr. Busy Electrician who couldn't hold on for just five more minutes? Yes, he'll be doing me another special favor and will be going there tomorrow afternoon. It's the best he can do. You have to bear in mind it's Sunday. We'll charge extra, of course. I don't care. I have no power. I'll get him myself if he doesn't show up. some food anyway. There you go. Godspeed. And drive safe. Mm, Alright. Alright, let's uh let's get to town, I guess. I'm glad we managed to get past the uh candle part. Because you know all it takes is for you to forget to open one drawer. And you're screwed. Alright, car keys. Uh-oh. The car would not start. It was only then that I realized I had left the lights on. Oh no! The car battery was dead. Aw, oh, fuck me. Okay. Um, hi Jerry, it's Michael. My car battery is dead. Insane. My car is dead. What? Are you sure? Have you checked its pulse? I'm not joking. It's gone. My friend, this completely redefines the term suspension of disbelief you sometimes use for your story. <laughs> I'm speechless. I forgot the lights on and the car ran out of battery. All because of that bloody fog. Jerry, you've got to help me. Get over. Jerry, I can't spend the whole night without one single source of light. I barely know this place, and I won't be able to find my way. Heck, I don't even know if it's rid of ghosts yet. Are you a sleepwalker, Michael? You lie down on the bed, you sleep, you wake up, and you'll have tons of bright light then. That's not helping, and you're the one who got me into this mess in the first place. No, 
Okay, okay, listen. When will you be coming back to Rockford? I'll be arriving home early tomorrow morning, and I'll come for you shortly after. We'll drive to town, stop yourself up, and then spend the rest of the day in your garden, drinking some beers while we wait for Mr. Electrician. Sounds like a plan? Yeah, I guess. But I don't think there's any plan B either. Apparently. All right. I'll be on my way then. Call me back if you need anything. And Michael. Yes. Just don't let this situation get on your nerves. I promise it won't. Goodbye. All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, we have no food. We have no lights. We're just gonna freaking go to bed at uh, 5 p.m. If they let us, of course. But. Oh, it was still too early to sleep. I guess I'll work then. I wish I had... I know I had to work on my book, but I said looking around a bit more it wouldn't hurt. Hmm. wonder what I can do at this point. Do we need to find some lamp oil? Looks like there's something we missed in the gallery. Is this one? We missed something in the gallery. Art. Looked at the necklace. World Arts. 19th of September, 1962. Dear James, I'm going to make use of these resting moments to thank you once again for your kindness. Those shields that you have donated to us are wonderful. If it weren't for you, our section dedicated to African objects wouldn't be anything else other than a mere collection of photographs. Also, I've been looking into these Dalmar you mentioned. I have to say, they seem to be rather fantastic. If it wasn't for your personal account of their activities, I'd dismiss them as old wives' tales. Found a few looks... books mentioning them, and I'd be very happy to lend them to you. They will be mailed at once. I hope they can satisfy your curiosity. Cordially to yours, Simon Russell. Oh, let's go check the newspapers now that we have a date. need to call Jerry again. I kind of wish that I understand why it's because, you know, the way the game is built, there's just a bunch of flags here clicking through. But I kind of wish the conversations went directly, like, from one into the next. 
and I did not have to call Jerry like five times um, when I've cleared all the flags. Always, always, always remember to call people until you get the busy tone. Hmm. I already bought a barber enough and I wasn't paying her that much after all. Shit, what am I missing? Looks like there might be something in the living room I missed. I wonder how long the cup of coffee is sitting there. There we go. April 20th. During a fit of rage, I burned my previous diary. Not that I'd regret it. As, it. as if my disjointed notes were worth anything. Your only purpose was to keep me sane. I feel that this is my escape route. My only means of finding some inner peace. Whenever I put my pen to the paper, I feel like I can... Sorry. Reflect upon my situation. I just wish I had more options, that's all. But I'm rambling. I must think clearly. Focus, focus. May 12th. I've become an eternal guardian, stuck between a few choices, none of which are good. Do I fulfill a promise and validate everything that I believe in and the very principles of my life? Or am I condemned to spend the rest of my existence in the deadness state, a ghost with no other purpose than just being here and watching? I truly have no escape. I can find an appropriate solution to this problem, and I must pay the price. I'm a shadow of the man I used to be. Only these notes remain, my testament, and in these moments of meditation, my sole companion. June 26th. Today I spent the entire afternoon staring at the window, my mind a blank. Oddly enough, I really didn't care. It seems now as though it was something natural for me, part of my personality. But I know the reason very well. I've lost my soul. I'm an empty shell, devoid of any feelings. I renounced them on that fateful day. And the worst thing is I knew there were going to be consequences. No, no, that's not true. Consequences were far worse than I expected. How could I be so blind? January 21st. I often wonder what would have happened to me if we'd simply reversed it all. What would happen if right now I come out and told the world what really happened? No, I'd end up rotting in jail. Although... That might be a better destiny compared to this eternal suffering. November 17th. Can't say for sure when it began. I just heard them one morning, coming from the next room. The whispers. Are they real? Have I been alone for too long? They won't stop. I can't stand it any longer. February 9th. Ever since I'd locked it away, I, that everything seems to have calmed down a bit. Perhaps James is right after all. It's madness, I know, but at this point I'd be inclined to believe anything. May. Over the years, I was convinced that everything James suffered was a misfortune, a whim of destiny. For the first time ever, I'm not so sure anymore. I never thought it could happen, but I believe I understand now. If this is so, then cursed be my soul. Poor James. If I had acted in another way, then maybe things would have worked out differently. But it's too late now, and I have to suffer my calvary. September 13th. The noises are back, although this time they're different. Before, I'd only hear them inside my head, as if someone or something was whispering and... How to put this? Interrupting my thoughts. But now, I can really feel them spreading around the house. What are they? September 14th. I've realized. The noises are coming from down there. I don't want to think about it anymore. December. They are unbearable. They get worse at night. Oh, how I wish it would stop. What is going on down there? I don't dare to go nearer. I don't want to know. M M May or something? God, how many years have passed? I've lost all sense of time. I have to get out of this place. They were disturbing the way I couldn't explain it. I felt curious about what had been tormenting the poor fellow. 
So now we should be able to call Jerry again, I think. Hello? Jerry, it's me. What's up, Michael? Do you know anything about the previous inhabitants of this house? Not much. Just there were some strange individuals. There's also the murder. You're kidding. Murder, you say? James. James Blackwood, according to the stuff I've been reading. Ah, so you're already turning the place upside down. I should have thought so. There's enough material for a whole series of stories here, you know. After you finish your book, my friend. Yeah, yeah. But it can never hurt poking around a little. Would you just get back to work? Call me if you need anything. All right. Goodbye. All right. Do, 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 do. Going up. Going up. Well, where are we? Oh, this way. Through and through and up and up and up the attic. I'm checking out the newspapers. I looked for a day the jury told me and found an interesting article. Terrible news shocks the community of Rothbury. Mr. James Blackford, distinguished resident of the town and widely acknowledged construction engineer, was accused of murder yesterday by Miss Eva Mariani, maid of the Blackwood family. While the nature of the situation is at the most unusual, given that Mr. Blackwood is a highly respected gentleman, Miss Mariani, an Italian immigrant and aspiring photographer, affirms to having a photograph that supports this accusation. I knew no one would ever believe me, so I took a picture of him, she says. I was supposed to be in town during the afternoon, but I didn't have the need to. I mean, I didn't have any errands to do, so I was in my room and sort of shadow out in the garden. When I glanced through the window, I just couldn't believe my eyes. The lady. Oh, God. The sole thought of it sent shivers down my spine. The photograph in question is in possession of the authorities, and it has been revealed that it clearly shows Mr. Blackwood burying a shape in his garden. We could almost confirm that the shape is a body, says Police Chief Willem Bailey. But even if the image is not clear, that alone with Miss Mariani's statement is enough to open a serious case against Mr. Blackwood. Police officer is already heading to the Blackwood Manor as we speak. Up until this accusation, it was believed that Mrs. Catherine Blackwood was on a trip. According to the information we received from the school where she teaches, the police chief continued, a notice was sent to the teacher's department which stated that Mrs. Blackwood had to leave on a sudden trip and she would make use of her license to do so. Miss Mariana's accusation puts Mr. Blackwood in a very compromising situation. Even if we can't find anything in the garden, he has a lot of explaining to do. The efforts of Dr. Christopher Milton, one of Rothbury's most respected doctors and longtime friend of the Blackwood family, to minimize the facts have been unsuccessful and been used as the subject of discussion throughout the whole town. Hundreds of rumors are crossing the land. Theories range from plausible and well-conceived to wild and crackpot ideas. The question that keeps lingering in everybody's mind for which the answer is yet to be found is, why would a wealthy and educated man cold heartedly murder his wife after 30 years of marriage? Damn. I don't think there's anything we can do with it. Alright, that's cool. So murder is the base of everything. Uh, is it time for us to get to bed? Not time for us to get to bed. I hope it's time for us to go to bed. I don't know what else to do. Yes, I laid down on the bed.
there's a door. I was awakened from my strange dream by some odd noises reverberating around the room. The noises seemed to grow louder as I approached the fireplace. Oh, I guess I need to use the stethoscope. That's where I need to use it. I listened carefully as I moved the stethoscope around the fireplace. Yes, the noises were coming from there, but I still couldn't determine their source. Check another fireplace instead. The noises were definitely spreading through the fireplaces, probably via some conduit. I concluded they had to be coming from below. Now remember, this is supposed to be pitch black, theoretically. So, I don't quite know how he's moving about. I thought about investigating, but then I realized the basement would be pitch black at this time. I couldn't go down there without some light. So spooky. So do we just go back to bed? The scratches had stopped. I thought it was the right moment for me to go back to sleep. I went back to bed. Sunday, October 13th. On the second day, a fierce storm had assaulted the land. I could hear the trees cracking or rather moaning to the lashing of the rain and quickly abandoned my hopes of having the power fixed. And I think this is a good spot to call it for today. Um, I expect this is going to take us probably like three streams, maybe four. Depends if we want to do the extra bit from the director's cut as well or not, but yeah, no, um, you know, I, this is one of my favorite point and click adventures. I think it does a really good job of spooking you out. Um, so I'm excited to, you know, showcase it for y'all. Um, we will be back with it on, when's our next stream? Sunday morning, I believe. Um, though I will probably spend some time streaming um, tomorrow night and Friday. Um, so if you're interested, make sure to follow me on Twitch.tv slash Games of Nick. Make sure to uh, like, to follow, uh, hit the, the bell so you know when I go live. We'll be playing some Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Maybe finishing it? We're, we're pretty close to it at this point. I, I think... I can't expect there is... There are more than four streams left in that game overall. I think two might do it, but we'll see how thorough we want to be about things. Um, so, feel free to, you know, follow me for if you want to see more of that. Um, otherwise, feel free to check out youtube.com slash games with Nick. Um, there's some exclusive content going live there. Um, first, the uh, Super Mario Bros. playthrough went live. Now the God of War playthrough is going live. The original God of War. So, check that out. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I appreciate you taking the time to check out my content. Um, and I will see you 
next time. <laughs>